what a privilege for all of us to be here this evening and what an honor it is for me to get to share a few words with all of you. But first, I have to extend my apologies to the directors and to the administrators, the parents, the music for all staff, and even to my family, because my remarks tonight are really for all of you student musicians. Events like the Music for All National Festival uh, do so much more than give us all a chance to perform. They give us perspective. If it weren't for events like this one, how would we ever get to see and hear other concert bands and orchestras and jazz bands and percussion ensembles and chamber groups from all over the United States? Now, I suppose we could go to YouTube, but that's just not the same as being there. There's something about experiencing music in the moment that makes it more real, more valuable, and more personal to us. By being there, we also get to experience empathy. That is, we know what it feels like to be on the stage ourselves, so we listen to live performances with a shared ear. That's being there. A little over a year ago, I retired from a wonderful career as a band director. Now, I literally travel the world teaching kids, working with young teachers, with experienced teachers, with administrators on the importance and the impact of music. It seems that everywhere I go, people find that music allows them to express something deep within themselves that they simply can't find another way to release. Last August, I had a being there experience. I found myself in the Philippines, in the Rizal province, not too far from the capital city of Manila. I visited a very small school in a fishing village with about 140 kids from kindergarten through high school. The principal there wants every child to have music as a part of his education throughout all those years, because she knows that kids who study music in school become better people. They work together better, they respect each other more, they're more industrious, more studious, more committed. They're kinder to each other and to the world in general. And because there are no shortcuts to becoming a good musician, they learn that excellence is tied to hard work. Though she has limited access to playable instruments, she still finds a way to introduce the experience to her students. <laughs> to tell you, I was caught a little off guard when I stepped into that room, and my job was to work with the bottle band. <laughs> but you know, after lunch each day, those students break up into small groups, and they meet in several thatched roof huts where an older student teaches the younger ones how to play a trumpet or a saxophone or a flute. And then they come together as a concert band to apply the skills they learned in the bottle band you just saw. By the way, the principal who designed this curriculum with such an emphasis on music as a means of teaching life skills is also the music teacher. Now, if I were to ask all of you students what your orchestra or band experience means to you, you would tell me that it has helped you discover that you're an artist, that it taught you to express yourself through music in ways you simply can't by any other means. You would tell me that you found a second family in your band or orchestra, or maybe that's where you found your only family. You would tell me that your band or orchestra room is a safe place where people get you and where you find things in common with people you'd never have met otherwise. When you tell me about your friends in band or orchestra, you tell me that you all make better choices than many of your friends who aren't in music and that it keeps you out of trouble. And then you'd quickly add that with all the rehearsals and practicing and the homework and the concerts and bus rides and more rehearsals and more practicing that you just don't have time to get into trouble. Back in October, I had another profound being there experience. I traveled to South Africa to be a part of a project where music is used to, as a means to transform the lives of children who come from extreme poverty. These children, the same age as all of you, live with one of the highest, if not the highest, violent crime rates in the world. Children in South Africa are often the victims of this violence and, not coincidentally, South Africa has one of the highest rates of HIV infection on the planet. But there is a group of people in South Africa who believe that if they introduce music into the lives of these children,
they'll give them a chance at better futures. And so in 1997, the Field Band Foundation was born with half a dozen bands spread across the country. Now, less than 20 years later, there were approximately 45 bands across South Africa representing all nine provinces with each band numbering 100 to 140 members. What you're about to hear is a short excerpt of one of those bands. It might not sound like the kind of championship marching band we're accustomed to hearing, but it is a sincere and committed effort toward an ultimate goal, no less important to them than your performances here were to you. As you listen to these kids tell their stories, ask yourself if just maybe they're telling your story too. about music. Doing something that you've never seen before. I've just recently joined and I think it's the best because they are very creative, they are professionals, I love the dance moves and the, the pit, it's amazing. The music they do, they're very creative. Like if you have stress and you come to the band, all the stress, like the band help you to reduce the stress and we work together, we listen to each other. Me, I'm good at dance and I like to dance. Um, Food Bear Foundation expresses our our emotions to the music and it's very nice for us to play, to play along, all, all of us and to get along. I could say this band has become like family to us. So definitely be with friends, be with our tools, tools, tools teaching us new things every day, and just having fun, you know, being able to go somewhere where you know it's safe and take you away from drugs. Yes, we like it because we get along, all of us, like, there's a, there's a nice relationship amongst all of us. I don't want to end up like street kids, you know, all these things, but uh, there is, they're here in the band. I feel great and I'm, I feel like I'm free. Did you see that, that little boy's face and did you notice that the only time he looked up and the only time his eyes opened wide was when he said, when I'm with the band, I feel like I'm free. Freedom means something very different to these children. The fact that, that uh, their experience in music makes them feel free is something that perhaps we experience too. But we might overlook that because we're entitled to our freedom. But nonetheless, I would be so bold as to state that each and every one of you, and I mean all of you students, find something similar in your music experience that these children find. But now let's go even farther away, much farther away than the Philippines or South Africa. If there are other civilizations elsewhere in the cosmos, you can be sure that they, like us, will find a way to make music. And their music will teach them the same things it teaches us, the same as those children you just saw. They, like us, will learn to be humble, to be grateful, to be sensitive and kind to one another, to discover things in themselves they never knew existed. And if somewhere in the cosmos we are so fortunate as to find ourselves in the company of this other civilization, no matter how distant our separate worlds, we'll discover we have a common ground to stand on. We will all know what it means to be there in that moment. We will all have made great sacrifices in pursuit of our art. We will all have come to know, to accept, and to love each other because of what we learn about ourselves through music. And rather than wage war so that one may conquer the other, we'll pick up our instruments, not our weapons, and we will go and practice. Thank you.